Hey everybody, welcome to the Fire It Up with CJ show. Today we are talking to Shai Tubali with this book, Unlocking the Seven Secret Powers of the Heart, a Practical Guide to Living in Trust and Love. So welcome, Shai. Hello, I'm so happy to be here. Oh, I'm thrilled to have you here. This is... Um, well, it's just such a sweet book. It really, well, it really touched my heart when I was reading this book. Um, I've been going through a process of, I guess, healing the heart. And um, it, this was, um, it just summarized and opened up a whole bunch of different ideas for me. So I wanted to start off with you first and understand a little bit about what your experience was in writing this book or just in the journey of um, finding these powers of your heart. H how did you find these powers? Or, or do they have a grounding in any particular philosophy or religion? Well, I guess it's a, it's a, it's a sort of combination. Uh, I, I, first of all, it, uh, it combines my, uh, my um, I guess what we can call expertise in the field of chakras. Mm -hmm. Therefore, it includes much of, uh, of, of my insights into, into what we uh, traditionally call the heart chakra. Mm -hmm. Then uh, there is uh, um, certainly my own uh, direct or personal experience in which, uh, in which uh, at a certain point uh, I had um, some, some extreme experience of, uh, of heartbreak. Mm. An ex extreme experience of uh, of what we consider to be abandonment, mm. that of uh, and uh, and uh, and the sudden a sudden uh, break of uh, of a very long and uh, and uh, devoted relationship. So oh. so the so the first reaction was of course a, a flood of sorrow and uh, and uh, and the broken heart, mm. but then I remember it very vividly at the uh, uh, three three nights after after this uh, had happened i found myself making a, a very peculiar uh, choice of the heart mm. and the choice of the heart was to remain open mm. and to remain unconditionally loving in spite of of this, uh, uh, what I con I considered back then uh, uh, a terrible ordeal, mm. and then at, at that moment there was there was the the entire secret of the heart, if we can put it this way, uh, uh, simply opened, simply unfolded before before my I wouldn't say my 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 mind's eye, but my heart's eye. Mm. And it was a, a sort of, of a blend of, of, of heaven and earth and, and the realization that, that the heart, when it is open, it can never be broken. You mm. see, so, so then, th then I could distinguish so clearly the state of, of vulnerability, which I then identified as a positive state. Mm. Uh, from the state of breakability because because uh, we usually our mind doesn't doesn't tell the difference you see break mm -hmm. uh, vulnerable equals breakable mm. and therefore th that is why we we close our ha our heart we we try to protect it we try to make sure that it doesn't get uh, hurt mm -hmm. So then we, we, we begin to, to learn, to train ourselves to love conditionally, to open conditionally, mm. to, to, to be suspicious, to, uh, and so on and so on. And, and on that, at, at that night, that, that, was, that was the end of it, you see? Wow. Because there was such a direct experience that this unconditional openness is, is a state of, of complete unbreakable joy an invincible state of uh, of mm. of, uh, of one's being that the, the, this i would say cautiously of course but 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 uh, but in essence uh, the heart hasn't closed ever again you see 
Wow. Okay. Oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> that must have been some meditation <laughs> that you were doing. Or I mean, so was it? Was it? <laughs> I, what were your? So you had this um, breakup with someone that you loved, and then your heart. It just seemed instead of closing it, you continued to have it open. And what were the practices that allowed you? So you were talking about chakra. So you thought I'm going to continue opening this. And it's incredibly, I've been doing this over the last six months and it's painful. It, it actually physically hurts your heart. Like I'm like, Oh, you know, like it feels like someone is stabbing you in the heart. So it, it's actually very painful to open the heart. So what, and I don't know if this happened over a course of one, you know, cause I've talked to a lot of different guests. Sometimes they have just a profound experience in which they do not go back. And it sounds like that it's like one night, one profound experience, never go back. Um, other times it's a kind of a, a knowing over time. So was yours this kind of profound experience in one evening or one day or one week that, or was it something that unfolded over time? Well, uh, the, the specific experience was, was irreversible by nature, but, uh, but uh, it, it's important to clarify. It's not all, uh, uh, all, a, a perfectly beautiful afterwards because because <laughs> in terms in terms of pain the pain was was still flooding alongside this this heart openness and and actually because of this heart openness because of this uh, absolute knowledge or conviction that the heart uh, in 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 its uh, at its very core at its uh, at its deepest nature cannot be uh, um, affected or wounded that there, there was there was the ability to allow it fully mm. you see so 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 that the grief was was actually uh, was actually able to uh, in a way to to purify itself to 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 arise without without inhibition without uh, uh, reserving uh, some of it for tomorrow mm. you see so, so then the, the, there was this, this state of purification, uh, but I, I would just add one, one more aspect uh, to that night. I, I think that, that, then, that then there was the understanding of, uh, of, of what, that, what, what it meant, uh, the, the, the heart of, of Jesus or the, heart of, or the nature of the universal heart, mm. you see? Because then suddenly you you realize all the uh, you understand why why uh, you uh, from this type of heart you can forgive, mm. and from this heart you can uh, uh, you you can allow this kind of compassion or generosity that is not self centered. Mm. Mm -hmm. Because to to uh, to a certain degree you can say that that when you when you get in touch with the. the the deepest nature of your heart it is not just your heart it is the heart it is mm. it is universal by nature mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so mm. yes there, there, of course there, there had been uh, many practices of uh, of heart chakra and uh, and many experiences uh, that uh, preceded that but uh, but this was uh, an irreversible shift that uh, that uh, then in, has inspired me to uh, to write this book mm. you see? Mm -hmm. and to and to to give uh, several schools on this topic mm. several training yes yeah so um the pain so for me it, it ha was not one night sadly <laughs> 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 it's been it's been um the course over months with one particular exclamation point moment, there have been like lots of different moments over time. Um, it started with an inexplicable kind of grunting sound. Actually, it was like a, it felt like a guard. You talk about guarding your heart and protection from your heart. And when I would go open and open myself up through kind of very similar practices, it sounds that you have done or part of your practice and i go into awareness and open my heart i would get to a point and i heard uh, you know, like it literally was a grunt that came where it was like my stomach or heart was just not it's like don't even 
think about opening up like that. Um, so it was almost like that for a year, honestly, for a whole year, I was making those kind of grunting, very unappealing sounds. <laughs> Thank goodness for, for COVID because I would be going through meditation <laughs> retreats and I'd be putting myself on mute. Otherwise I would be disturbing everyone in the, in the, in the meditation hall. Um, and then it was after the, in, in, in um, the United States, there are nine Asian women that were were um, were killed by a, a a man that actually was recently convicted for a hate crime, yes. and um, my heart had been opening over that period of time, and it was very fragile. So, and, and I don't know if it's mm-hmm. fragile or strong. I'm not really sure what had happened, but when that happened, every instance of um you talk about self-hatred or loathing or kind of self-doubt or shame kind of came rushing in and I re-experienced every single it felt like at one moment I re-experienced all of the times in my life from like when I was a little kid all the way up to when I was working anytime someone had said something about being Asian and making me less than, and I just re-experienced everything. And my heart felt like it was shattering into a thousand pieces and it, and it hurt. And I was just crying for a very long time. Still, I sit on the meditation cushion and I'm crying. I don't even know what I'm crying about. It's not, I actually have no cognitive understanding. I can make something up, but fundamentally I have no idea. Um, what's happening. So I'm sure you've seen both. You have been, um, I would say, lucky to actually have it open and be permanently open. Um, How do you, and I'm sure you have have students who haven't had this kind of permanent thing. What what kind of advice do you give people who, because it's painful, it's really painful. And I've had meditations where I've actually understood that the heart is infinite. I'm like, wow, I, I could actually feel it and understand that it's actually infinite so that it can never be mm-hmm. hurt. But it's hard to go through that um, if you don't actually have that one yes. night and done. <laughs> so what advice do you have for folks about vulnerability and how to keep and stay with it? Well, first of all, I, I would I would like to, to to take a moment to to appreciate what uh, all, all that you you've been describing here because uh, it's so beautiful how you're describing the, this kind of it's uh, I would call it it's a it's a it's a it's a positive heartbreak when when you, you feel that the heart begins to expand it expands again something that that we've erected for for a very long time which is the wall. Mm-hmm. So what is what we feel that that is aching is actually the wall that that is breaking. Mm, you see oh. that that is that that, that is breaking and, and, and so and so uh, when we understand that this pain is is the what we can consider to be the the positive heartbreak. Mm. You see a heartbreak in in the other direction. Then then it it feels it feels a, a, like a blessing. Yeah, like even just thinking about a wall breaking actually almost brings me to tears. It's like, oh, it's a wall breaking. It's shattering this, these guards or walls that I've been putting up. Exactly, and and, and what what I would like to uh, to uh, to suggest to 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 viewers, listeners, and and uh, who who still uh, find it difficult. There is one one amazing secret that comes from the world of chakras and actually from the world of uh, of uh, it's it's all it's both tantric Buddhism and also and also uh, uh, in uh, ancient Hinduism that actually the the heart chakra has uh, its its relocation is uh, is called the inner cave of the heart. Mm-hmm. Now the inner cave of the heart is not is not the the surface the surface part that that is close to the skin, but but uh, you actually go move more deeply into the point. Is it right here on the left side? <laughs> okay, sorry. Go the, ahead. <laughs> the, the heart chakra is midway between between the two breasts. Right. You you then you then if you want to find the relocation of the chakra, 
you, you penetrate deeply into the center of the body, then a, a little uh, um, before the front part of the spine, mm -hmm. just before the front uh, pa part of the spine, there we find uh, uh, what, is, what, what we can call the innermost part of the heart. Mm. Now, and, and this is what is so beautiful because this, the part that is, is close, closer to the surface is the part that contains all the heats. Life's mm -hmm. blows, you see life, li life's shocks, and, the, and, and this is where we actually experience the difficulty to, to open. Mm -hmm. And we experience still the pain and the, and the impressions. Now, if mm -hmm. you go a, a little bit deeper, what you find there is, uh, is what we can consider to be the, the deeper impressions or deeper imprints. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, uh, th there we have uh, our uh, deeper uh, relationship with ourselves, what we think of ourselves, our, uh, our dual connection with ourselves and, and, and so on, our deepest betrayals and, and all that. But if you move to, to that inner cave of the heart, if you move with your consciousness deep into, into this inner cave, that is the deepest po point of the heart, just before the, the front side of the, of the spine, there we are told, and justifiably we are told, uh, there we find a, a part in, of the heart that has never been affected, mm. has never been traumatized, has mm. never been touched. It, it's, uh, it's beyond time and space. Mm. So this, this is what, I, what I, I, I teach others to learn to, to reside and to relax mm. in this part in order to, to, uh, to regain their power uh, and return to, to the surface part to do the work, you see? Mm. But, okay. but, but, first, but, but first we need to trust that there, there has been a part in the heart that has never been wounded, mm -hmm. that has nothing to do with our traumas, and that is still as pure, as innocent, as beautiful, as glowing as it has always been. Mm. So the so I actually when I feel so I, I make sure I understand. So it's during um, a meditation that I would tune into the cave of the heart, which is the center point in between your two um, breasts, all the way before the spine. That's the cave of the heart. This. Um, this kind of pristine heart that hasn't been affected. And so if I feel, you know, so I actually feel pain to the right and the left of that spot, spot in different parts of my chest, like literally enduring pain where when I open, it just feels like, oh, like it, it actually hurts when I open. So if mm -hmm. I focus on this center part, how does it heal the pain, actual physical pains that are in different parts of my heart, the guarding? Well, if, if you're experiencing a, a, a pain on, on the right and on the left, you, you say, or there is, a, there is some kind it's, of... Yeah, it's like literally like, so if I were to go to the center point of my chest, like right here, and then sometimes it's like right here and below. And, and I don't know yes. if there, do each of the points actually have a correlation to some something, or is it just random depending on the person? No, no, it, it's actually very meaningful because because these pains, uh, according to to the chakra knowledge, there, there is a, there is the right side of the chakra and the left side of the chakra. The left side of of the heart chakra, for instance, is uh, is, is deeply related to issues of, of self acceptance, mm. of uh, of self love, of self care, our ability mm. to 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 accept, to to forgive. Um, it's it's the more feminine side. It's uh, it's uh, the the more embracing part that that uh, including our capacity to to embrace ourselves mm. and to know and to agree to nourish ourselves and so on. Mm. Then the right side is connected more to the sense of uh, of meaning mm. in our life. We are feeling that we have a role in life. That that we that we have a part. That uh, that. Uh, uh, our, the, the part that the, in, in which we give, from which we give, because the left side is all about receptivity. Do mm. we know how to, to receive? The right side is all about our ability to, to, to generously flow and to, and to serve and to, um, and, and to love actively. Mm. Mm. So, so then the, the thing about, about this, this uh, center of the heart, the inner cave, 
is that if you reside it for for uh, for for sufficient time, what it does is that it slowly it slowly uh, uh, brings all the the uh, the excessive energy energies mm. from from right and left uh, into the center, and and it can transform it. You see, now it, it's it should be emphasized that that the, the inner cave of the heart is not a replacement it cannot replace therapy right because we we still need to to uh, to undergo these processes it only empowers us it inspires us in, inspires us to to know and to experience already now that there is a part that that doesn't need to go through a process you see right there's a part that this this pristine heart is per, it doesn't have to go through psychological i may actually have to figure out what is the psychological issues related for me not accepting myself or not mm -hmm. being able to give love but it's not necessarily there is a part that it can it it seems like if, if this is kind of if this the cave of the heart is vibrating at a certain level it probably just like dissolves from the in, it sounds like it dissolves from the inside. This the kind of blockages that are happening. Is that yes. is that right? That's well, wow, that's interesting. Okay, and is there is there um, is there a meaning behind the upper and lower part of the chest when actually? Yes. Okay, what's the upper versus lower? What's the difference? Well, the the upper uh, the upper and the lower the the lower is more connected. It's it's what we can consider uh, our more earthly heart more mm. human heart it's a, mm. it's the part that that actually goes through the journey that accumulates mm. the, the the part that that there is in relationship with the world in this lifetime mm. the upper part is is what we can what we can consider the the soul mm. the region of the soul which is more about heart knowing mm. uh, uh, the heart as the gateway to the heart, to the soul. Mm. We can uh, also speak of the uh, the back part of, of the heart mm -hmm. because the back part is is that which is connected to the to to the to our deepest knowing, to to mm. our deepest soul knowing, to, mm -hmm. to also to the universal heart, mm. and then the frontal mm. frontal part. This actually is relevant to all chakras. Is more connected to to our immediate and direct relationship with the world how we meet the world that's mm. why again the front the frontal part and the surface part of the chest mm. is the most vulnerable and the most fragile uh. this is exactly where we feel somebody tells us something insulting and we feel this heat uh. in the heart and uh. when we have the heartbreak it's 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 a little bit deeper you see, mm -hmm. because it's just in what is called the middle, middle part of the heart. Then right. there is the inner cave. Yeah. Wow. Beautiful. So there's, there's actually a way when you are feeling this pain to just tune into the cave of the heart, which I think you have an exercise in the book about doing that, but I didn't put it together. So you go into the heart chakra, you go into the cave of the heart and that vibration heals it from the inside out. Yes. Yes. Wow. Okay. Yes. Wow. Okay. Wow. Interesting. Okay. This has been fascinating. <laughs> We've be, been be, just because, talking because yes. Yeah. Go ahead. Be, be, because we realize that, that they, when we we communicate with the heart's uh, essential or inherent wholeness, that is the healing in itself. You see. Mm. Me? Otherwise, otherwise we we have the 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 false experience that our heart has really been broken that it is halved or that it is incomplete and that it is uh, on a search in, in in a in a constant search desperate search to to become complete you see mm. but if but but uh, but, but, but then the, that that's a sort of a of a false process of becoming right right versus like you already have it it's perfect it's working fully functional, infinite, it's there. So you just have to, just the fact of recognizing is reifying that it exists. It exactly, exists, exactly. it's there. And so you don't have to be like looking out there to get 
love because it's already inside of you. Exactly. You, you simply need to surrender to, to the heart's uh, uh, immanent power, not, not, to, not to create or invent it. Yeah. Love it. Okay. Um, all right. I have even more that I want to ask you. <laughs> but we were talking about um, a couple different things in your book. Um, one, we, we've really been focusing on um, secret number two, the strength and vulnerability and yes. how um, our heart can take um, it can take it. It's infinite. It's powerful. It's, um, it's there to serve us. We just have to know that it's there. We, we don't even recognize that it's there. I've been talking to Shai Diwali about his book, 